Here we are with a question given to us. Is Jesus God? That's a very good question. And pretty much as we understand it, most everyone in the world believes that Jesus existed. Now, they may not, or many do not believe that he is God, or for that matter, many do not believe he even came from God. But they, historically, we recognize that that Jesus Christ did exist. There's enough historical record speaking about him that it's pretty much understood. Yes, there was a man named Jesus Christ. He existed. And yes, he was crucified. He died. Um, Many people may believe he died a criminal. He really was a criminal. But whatever the situation, they believe he existed. Now, for Christians, there's still uh, people who consider themselves Christians who believe in the Bible. There are still different ideas about who Jesus is. Uh, Many people believe he's a prophet of God, most certainly. They believe he was a very good man. He was a very powerful, miraculous ability with miracles man. But they may not believe he is God. Then there's other people like myself. I believe that Jesus is God. Now, the only way we can know for certain, uh, for those of us who believe in the Bible, the way to know for certain is, what does the Bible say? When we go to God's word, what does it say about Jesus Christ? And this has to be the standard for the Christian. Otherwise, we could have all sorts of different beliefs, and you could believe whatever you wanted to without a standard. So we need to go to God's word and see what it says. Now, most people will go to John, the Gospel of John. So in John chapter 1... John chapter 1, starting with verse 1, we read these words. Now, these first words in John 1, 1 is going to sound very familiar to those who are familiar with the Bible. Uh, I don't mean just that they know this verse, but it sounds very familiar to Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, listen to how John 1, 1 starts. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Now, here we have these first three words, these first three verses. And the word was there with God. The word was God. And it mentions that the word and God were there in the beginning. Much like what we see in Genesis 1.1, the creation account. And so... Here we see that God was not alone. The word was there. Now, but not only that, this word was God. So God is the word. God is there in the beginning. And he was involved in creation. But still we had to find out who this word is. Well, if you go on down in John chapter 1, down to verse 14, we read these words. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. Glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's pretty much narrowing it down. We're pretty much understanding that's Jesus. Keep going to verse 15. John testified about him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. And if you keep on reading, you get on down to verse 17. It even, meant, it even says Jesus' name. But it's pretty clear that this word became flesh, dwelt among mankind. The Bible was written about him. This is Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, drop on back to verse 1 again. And wherever we see the word word, we're going to put in Jesus, the name Jesus. And look what we see it saying. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. So not only does it sound like the creation account, but it even makes it clear in verse 3, Jesus was involved with creation. And nothing came into being without Jesus. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to see some things there that also point to Jesus or someone being with God. Now, we've just seen who that someone is in in John 1. That someone is Jesus. Drop on down with me, if you will, to verse 26. Verse 26. 
Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, who's the us? It says, let us make man in our own image. And once again, someone involved with God in creation. Well, the word was there with God. And the, and the word was involved with creation. The word was God. God is there also creating. So here we see both, as we understand when we get the New Testament, the Father and the Son in the very beginning. What's also interesting, not part of this question, but if you drop back to verse 2, look who else we see is there. Look at verse 2 of chapter 1. All I needed to do was turn one page. <laughs> okay, look at verse 2. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. So now we see not only God the Father, God the Son, but God the Holy Spirit were all there in the beginning, which only makes sense when we recognize, and what most people have heard of, is the Trinity. So don't need to go any further into that, maybe for another question later on, but let's look at another way. The Bible says Jesus is God. Jesus also accepted something that only God should accept. Let me show you what I mean. Go all the way back to Revelation. Revelation 22. The very last chapter of the Bible. Revelation 22. We know in Revelation that John is, is having a vision. And in this vision, he sees many wonderful things. It overwhelms him. But there was an angel there with him that was showing him things, being with him while he was seeing these things in the vision. And look what happens with John in verse, in verse 8. I, John, this is the very end of the vision. I, John, am the one who heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed me these things. But he said, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours. And of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who heed the words of this book, worship God. And look at what this angel does. This angel says, don't worship me, worship God. Okay, so an angel knows that God is the only one to be worshipped. And when worshipped, this angel says, don't do that. It's wrong. I am only an angel. Okay, and he, by the way, he also points himself to be a fellow servant with John. So you don't worship a man either. Okay, you know, he's a, he, they're, they're on equal terms, at least in their service to God. Okay, so now go to Matthew 14, because we see Jesus also receiving worship. Matthew chapter 14. In Matthew 14, this is, this is following the feeding of the 5,000. We see in verse uh, 22, we see Jesus walking on the water. We know what happens here. He's walking on the water during a storm. The disciples are all scared about seeing him walking on the water. If you get down to verse 26, okay? The, and by the way, the boat was in a storm. The waters were, 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 were rocking the boat. According to verse 24, they were the, battered by the waves. Now look at verse 26. When the disciples saw him, Jesus, walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. So Jesus is the one walking on the water. Now what follows here is Peter coming out on the water with Christ and at first doing a very good job, but then his faith kind of weakened and he starts sinking and Jesus saves him. Okay, drop on down with me to verse, verse uh, 31, where Jesus stretches out his hand for Peter. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And they stopped, got in the boat, the wind stopped, 
So the wind now stops. Obviously, the waves are going to stop pushing on a boat. Verse 33. And those who were in the boat, look what it says they did, worshipped him. Notice in saying, you are certainly God's son. Notice what you don't see Jesus doing. He doesn't do like the angel. He doesn't say, don't do that. I'm merely a fellow servant with you. I'm merely a man. Jesus, John chapter one, is God. And Jesus accepts worship as only God should. One more thing. Go to John chapter 21. One more instance that shows that Jesus is God. Jesus would have certainly denied this if it wasn't so. Because now someone calls him God. John, I think it said John chapter 21. I meant John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 24. Remember Thomas, we called Doubting Thomas. He wasn't there when Jesus showed himself with the disciples the first time. And then so he came and Jesus shows him the nail prints in his hands and the sword, the sword or the spear thrust, uh, the scar in his side, the opening in his side. Look at what it says in verse, uh, in verse 27. Then he said to Thomas, reach here with your fingers and see my hands and reach here your hand and put it in my side and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. Notice Jesus goes on to tell Thomas about you saw these things. Blessed are those who, who have not seen and still believe. You saw because you believed. But he doesn't say, don't call me God. Jesus called God in John chapter 1. Jesus worshipped as God, Matthew chapter 14. And Jesus called God here in John chapter 20 to his face. And in no time did Jesus say, stop that. No, I'm not. Jesus is God. Amen.